done. Okay, we're recording? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Diane Porterfield from the Connect and Communicate Series Planning Committee. Thank you for joining us today for Unique Pennsylvania Academic Library Book Club's Food for Thought and Brew Pubs. This discussion will be recorded and it will be made available to Pennsylvania Library Association College and Research Division members through the Pennsylvania Library Association website. For this discussion, you'll only need a headset or speakers. We encourage you to ask questions through the chat box at the bottom right throughout the discussion. And we'll attempt to include your questions as appropriate during the discussion or at the end. Um, if you do have a microphone active, we do ask that you mute yourself so that we don't get too much background noise going on. Um, We'll also do our best to help people with technical issues. If you have any issues, please put those in the in the chat box as well, and we'll monitor it. Um, this session is being brought to you by the Pennsylvania Library Association College and Research Division's Connect and Communicate series. I'd like to thank the CRD board for su supporting the Connect and Communicate initiative and the other Connect and Communicate planning committee members. Sarah Pike, Sarah Pike is here at helping out with the uh, co captioning. Um, Jill Hallam Miller, Aaron Burns, Amy Snyder, Amanda Avery, Ryan Sittler, and Rona Lee Sioko. I'd also like to acknowledge the Pennsylvania Library Association for allowing us to bring this discussion to you through, our, through Zoom. So we will be keeping track of attendance today, so please type in the number of attendees at your location if there are more than one of you watching. And finally, I'd like to introduce our panelists for today. We have, from Susquehanna University, Catherine Furlong and Ryan. <laughs> Aki, I'm probably saying your name wrong, Ryan. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, it's ache. Ache. Too yeah. obvious. <laughs> and from Harrisburg Area Community College, we have Kathleen Heidecker and Wendy Brubaker. <laughs> and so we will get started if um, we are going to hear from Susquehanna University first. If you guys want to go ahead, you can... Take All right, over. Ryan is taking over. Good afternoon. My name is Catherine Furlong. I will be talking about how our book club at the Brew Pub got started, why we wanted something that included our community members, and some of the challenges we've dealt with and are still dealing with, and some new plans and possible changes as we move forward. So, so I've been director, director here at the Blauweiss Library for four years now. Hey, Catherine, when I first, my audio is really weird, isn't it? Yeah, is your speaker on? It ought not to be, but. Is that better? A little bit. Better? No, it's still echoey, but that's okay. We'll just keep going. Can you hear anything? We think it's. We think it's getting picked up on Ryan's mic. Oh, all okay. right. Now it's better. Better now? Should I go forward? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Anyone? Is it that I can't hear you because I muted you? Catherine, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Yes, the echo <laughs> is done now. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry about that. I've been director at the Blauweiss Library for four years now. And when I first arrived, I batted around ideas for book clubs. We started some that were around the university theme on our common reading program. We tried to hold them in our beautiful traditional rare book room and absolutely nothing took off. So I took a step back and still was talking to, still talked to members of the community about the possibilities and my interest, but the only successful book club that was on campus that I could find was run by our president for his senior staff members. And I was not invited to that. I know it was successful. I know people read the books because it was the president's book club. But for students, nothing was sticking with our audience and probably because I was trying top down book club models and it didn't fit with our student population. 
what happened in 2016 was that a student named Jess, who is a member of our Student Library Advisory Committee, which is a student group that's recognized by our student government, came to me and she said she wanted to start having regular book club meetings with other students, but also to have something that could be attended by community members. When she brought me this idea, I was absolutely thrilled and I said, oh, the library, our rare book room, it's going to be the perfect place. And she just looked at me and said, um, no. She really was stressing the importance of having something that was a town gown collaboration, something that would be in downtown or what passes for a downtown in Sealands Grove. And she, her thought process, which she outlined to me, was that she knew, being a resident of the town and growing up here, that things had been really strained. The university had implemented a residency policy that required almost all students to live on campus, which took a lot of business away from locations downtown and significantly strained relationships between those businesses and the university. We had also, also recently gone through a Crusader name change. We are no longer the Crusaders of Susquehanna University. We are the Riverhawks of Susquehanna University. Um, many members of our local community thought that was unnecessary and to politically correct and it didn't help the already strained relationship that we had with our downtown colleagues. So Jess wanted to have these meetings downtown and highlight businesses for our students and we know from other things that we do that an active downtown supported by the university benefits the university and the downtown merchants. So that's how we got started thinking about doing something but doing it off campus. So Ryan? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we ended up settling on the Sealandsboro Brewing Company, which is a downtown location. Uh, we call it the brew pub around here, and we chose the brew pub for several reasons. Um, the student that started the, the book club, Jess, um, she already worked there. So we already had an open line of communication with the owners of the pub, and they were really receptive to her. Um, second, the pub is an award-winning, nationally recognized microbrewery and one of the most popular shops in our region. Um, they have a great setting in an old stone mansion built in 1816 for uh, Pennsylvania Governor Simon Snyder. Um, so the R of the pub is really perfect for our meetings. And um, the setting was very appealing to students because they have good, really good food and beer. And um, that makes everything better, right? So we decided to go there um, because of that. And finally, I could rhyme brew pub with the book club. Um, so it made naming this event really, really simple for me. Um, the pub was on board with the idea, but they did have a few demands that we needed to, to go over. Um, we needed to meet at night after the dinner rush and we ended up settling on nine o'clock. That worked best for the pub and it also worked best um, for our students and their, and their um, academic schedules. Um, everybody was called and all folks under 21 needed to wear wristbands and sit at their own table. They needed to sit at a separate table from the over 21 crowd. Um, the other thing was uh, we needed to guarantee a minimum amount of purchases so we weren't taking seats away from paying customers. Um, but once we got those details in order, uh, we went ahead with planning our readings. And so we got approval from the pub. I also needed to get approval from the provost and risk management here at the university because we were talking about undergraduate students in a setting with alcohol. Uh, it was a process, but it wasn't onerous. And I got permission with the caveat that at absolutely no point would Susquehanna University money pay for alcohol. So we moved forward with planning our first event. Uh, Jess and I talked about the fact that we really believe that all reading selections should be made by the students and all discussion questions should be led by students as well. And while we knew we wanted to have that going forward, we also knew that for the first thing we needed to make a pick. And I said, Jess, pick a book. Jess came back to me and she had an idea. And she came back and she said, great news, we have Roald Dahl. We're gonna be reading Roald Dahl for the first book club. And I said, okay, great. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the BFG, what do you have in mind? And she said, oh no, no. We're going to read one of his short stories in the collection Switch Bitch and it was originally published in Playboy magazine and it features non-consensual sex and I just 
sat there for a few minutes and thought, okay, what do I do next? Um, what I did next was say yes, because as Jess and I talked further about why she was making this selection, we agreed that especially um, on a college campus, discussing the ideas of consent and relationships and what, what it does mean to be in uh, to, to report such things was so incredibly important. So we reached out to our colleagues on the Sexual Assault Task Force on campus to make sure that we knew how to frame some of these difficult discussions. We also talked about whether we needed to have a trigger warning for this particular book club. And we didn't actually go so far as to say trigger warning, but we did say, guess what, this does involve non-consensual sex. Be aware of that before you start reading or before you come to the book club. Uh, we very carefully also th thought about our discussion questions. And despite all this worry, or probably because of all this worry, our first meeting was a great success. We had over 20 participants, including faculty and staff members, many from the Sexual Assault Task Force. And the discussions were appropriate and thoughtful. And we but beyond the story and about um, sexual consent questions and discuss 20th century literary culture and what it meant that important fiction was being published in magazines like Playboy that were entirely meant to be consumed by men. And from that point forward, I think because we had framed it so well to start, our students wanted to emphasize readings from a diverse author, from a diverse range of authors. And especially things that were not normally read in class. And for the most part, they've done a good job of sticking with this. So some of the books we've been reading in class include graphic novels like The Harlem Hellfighters and March and Ghost World and Fun House, Fun Home rather, and things that were short as well. Students really, really wanted to focus on things that could be consumed in a reasonable time frame. We also, even though we talked about the fact that we would have multiple copies of books and things like that, we also tried doing some eBooks. We selected Men Explain Things to Me for a variety of reasons, but one of those was that we had it as an eBook in our collection and we, want, we wanted to discuss how format matters. We also have a student job that focuses on publicity and marketing. We have a marketing intern, and that meant that the publicity materials for the book club were made by students for students. Um, they picked the formats and forums of communication and marketing that were most likely to attract student attention. Um, and unfortunately, this did mean, at least for the first two years, that perhaps it was less likely to attract that community attention, which is a get great segue back to Ryan. Yes, so um, as Catherine mentioned, our student marketing assistant focused primarily on advertising to students. Um, we did this through a few different ways that proved to be re relatively successful. Um, first thing, we put posters around campus and signage throughout the library, as you can see here. Um, a lot of students respond really well to having the posters and signage throughout the library, throughout the other buildings on campus. So we really, uh, we tried to capitalize on that. So we had, we had a generic poster that we put up, which you can see on the right, um, advertising when the book club was. We'd have it the last Wednesday of each month um, during the academic year. And then when we had a specific uh, book selected for each month, we would make new posters highlighting that specific title. And some of the, uh, the, the signage on the left here is some of the things that we would put throughout the library showing you where you could pick up your copy. We would have our copies on display right at the service desk for people to pick up. Um, we did social media reminders on Instagram and Twitter. Um, we really don't have students that use Facebook, so we didn't really focus too much on that, but um, a lot of our students are receptive to our Instagram posts, so we made sure we highlighted everything that we were doing on there as well. And um, lastly, we spent a lot of time sending out MailChimp emails to our sign-up list. Um, our list ended up being roughly 50 people. Um, so as soon as we had a selection made, this is a screenshot of one of our MailChimp emails. Um, as soon as we had a selection made, we would send out a notification to everyone. Um, and then as we got closer to 
um, the actual event, we would send out reminder emails as well. And it was a great resource to use because we could track who was opening emails, we could see who was getting them, who wasn't getting them, who might not be as interested in participating anymore, um, those kind of things. So it's a really great tool to use. If you don't use it, um, I would highly recommend using it. Um, but as Catherine, these methods were found to be the most appropriate for attracting student interest. Uh, in the fall, I do plan on spending a little bit more time promoting the club to the community um, because that's one of the biggest challenges we've dealt with so far. Um, let me get to the next page here. Um, we haven't quite had the community response we were hoping to get. Most of our attendees do have ties to the university, students, faculty, staff, and we did have the university president show up to one of our meetings, which was really exciting. Um, we have had some support from community members, like the Sealands Grove mayor came to uh, one of our meetings, uh, and some others who have attended and contributed to the discussions, but we would like to have more. Um, we are hoping to fix this as we move forward with a digital book club idea, and I'll discuss that in a minute. Um, another thing that we've been dealing with is um, working around students' schedules. Students are busy, and it is a lot to ask them to read something that's not required for coursework. Um, depending on the time of the semester, we're battling night classes, term or final exam prep, and other activities happening around campus. So this is something that we've had to, we've struggled with a little bit. Um, they have expressed the importance of selecting short consumable readings so there's not as much prep time for the monthly meetings and that'll be a main priority as we move forward. And one of the last things um, are some location concerns that we have. Um, the pub has been an excellent partner over the last two years. They really have been great and receptive and welcoming, um, but their dining room is small. Um, like I said before, it's housed in a, in a former home and it's only on one floor. Um, so depending on the size of our group, we could take up half of their dining space with our book club meeting. Um, and they don't take table reservations, so it's difficult to guarantee space that we would normally need, um, depending on how big the group is. Um, this hasn't been a major issue yet, but it's something that we're constantly worried about. So these are a few things that we need to think about as we move forward. Um, since the advisory committee has made it clear they want to keep the book club alive. Um, so we'll work on fixing those challenges and exploring new ways to engage a wider audience. And we're gonna, we have a few ideas um, to help remedy that. Um, we began discussions of an online book club for our Friends of the Library group um, so they can participate in the readings and contribute to discussion topics. We had a library intern work, start this work, but we're still actively looking for the appropriate plat platform to make this happen. Um, we started with a program that we had available through the university, but it didn't work out. We had some issues letting folks outside of the university attend any sort of um, digital discussion boards we made. So um, we're actively looking at Goodreads right now, but if anybody has any experience, anybody here at this webinar today has any experience um, using digital book clubs or anything like that, um, we're happy to, to take recommendations and ideas that others might have. Another thing that we looked at was um, alternative formats. This last spring semester, we toured around with listening to a podcast instead of doing a reading to see if we, if we could engage more students. Um, we had them listen to S-Town, which was a really great podcast. It's a non-fictional podcast about a murder in a small Alabama town. And it ended up being a bit too long for a lot of people, and our attendance was relatively low for that meeting. But the idea of branching out and trying a different format was well received by most of the students. Um, if we could find a podcast that was a bit more consumable, but just as engaging, we will try and explore this idea further in the next year. And lastly, another thing that we've looked at was um, a happy hour book club with the faculty. Um, we've discussed having this book club during the summer months to engage faculty and staff that are still on campus. Uh, we have received some initial interest from local faculty and staff members, but we're still negotiating with the pub to determine the appropriate day and time that would, inter that would not interfere with their dinner rush. Um, they weren't as receptive to this idea because we were shooting for the 4.30, 5 o'clock time period where we could get faculty and staff just leaving work. 
to stop over. Um, they weren't as receptive because they were thinking that we would take a lot of tables and businesses away. I tried to um, let them know that faculty and staff here after a, a long, difficult day are going to want to spend as much money on beer and, and food as anybody else would. Um, but they, they weren't buying it. Um, but I'm still trying to figure out what to do. Um, probably, I'm hoping to probably have something in line for maybe July or August, but definitely not June. That's a little bit too, too quick of a time frame for us. Um, but those are some new ideas that we're, we're looking at as we move forward and, and work to engage more community members and new students and um, try to perfect what we're doing here. So um, that's what we had planned for today. Um, we're happy to take any suggestions on anything, any comments or questions. I believe we'll be doing that at the end. So I will move on to our colleagues. I do see one question in the chat from Janelle. It's asking about what do we do with the multiple copies or how, how we handle that. Um, the multiple copies are purchased actually by the Student Library Advisory Committee. We have added them to our catalog so we can track them properly, but we don't need eight copies of Men Explain Things to Me in our collection. So our original plan was to give the extra copies to public libraries or uh, local school libraries. I don't believe that has happened because they were not purchased with library funds. So we had that little bit of a hiccup. Am I correct, Ryan? Yes, you're correct. <laughs> Ran into a thing that it, they weren't really ours to give away. So um, we're give, offering them to members of the Student Library Advisory Committee as sort of souvenirs to take home. Although if they then choose to donate them to the public <laughs> library, they can do that. But we quickly learned that we couldn't do that without their approval, which is good because it's a student group, right? They're right. running it. That is great that you can provide them though. Um, and thank you for that idea about the, uh, the alternative formats. And I have read something about podcasting clubs and I, I, that's another area that we are actually um, looking into to see if that would be a little bit more consumable for our, our um, students because timing is an issue. So I, I'm, and S-Town is one that I've actually listened to and thought was really interesting. So thank you for, for bringing that up. That was really interesting. Um, Kathleen and Wendy, do you want to go into what Harrisburg Area Community College is going? Is um, sure. And I was also going to suggest for podcasts, LeVar Burton has short stories that might be um, worthwhile to investigate. He has a That's podcast true. of short stories. It's almost like reading Rainbow, but not really. <laughs> uh, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just LeVar. <laughs> Yeah, let me uh, share my screen. Hold on. I'm Kathleen Heidecker and I'm the faculty librarian at the Gettysburg campus. And this is my colleague. Hi, I'm Wendy Brubaker and I have worn multiple hats here on our campus. I originally started as an adjunct English faculty. I teach developmental reading courses, but I also was a health career advisor for students. But as of recently, of April 30th, I am now the Director of Student Development and Multicultural Programming. So it kind of overlaps with what we'll be talking about today. So we thought we would start to um, the kind of the background, the history of where this all began, because it started first with what we call food for thought and it developed into book clubs as we reached out to faculty and staff and the library. So if we can progress to the next screen. It started with a strategic grant back in the fall of 2016. I applied for a $5,000 strategic grant. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, but at the time it was intended to last for a year. I've actually had it continue now that I'll be going into my um, second full year of continuing this project. Um, it basically was started because we have a high food insecurity rate. About 46% of our population is food insecure on a fairly regular basis. So there are some incentives on our campus and different initiatives that have derived from that statistic. Uh, we also went, wanted to improve the co-curricular activities, but at the same time, I saw in my classroom, the students were in developmental reading classes because they were not reading on a daily basis. This was not part of their normal routine, and then their academic skills were suffering. 
So we knew though that we had to tie in a book club to something that would entice them. And we started finding books and literature that you could tie into a movie. And you can progress to the next slide. Um, our funding on this one for these activities that we would have, um, we would invite faculty and staff to have different types of events. It could be students preparing for the T's for the uh, nursing program. There would be an information session on that. We could have um, essay writing, scholarship essay writing sessions. We could have um, career-based ones about resume. So any one of these would all fall under that food for thought category. So when I started speaking with Kathleen and realizing there was kind of a need missing here with having some type of book club to entice students, we started kind of thinking outside the box and how do we make this work? And the Food for Thought uses a app, a TextNow app, where the students will RSVP to us using TextNow. It's free, you can buy a paid version, but it is free. Um, and the students, it gives us ahead of time a tally so that we're aware of how much food to purchase. If we have low numbers for any number of events, we might have snacks available and we try to vary our snacks, but also have them on the healthier side. Um, but we also, if we have a certain number of students, depending on the event, we will provide meals. It could be uh, Panera, it could be Subway, it could be pizza, it could be a variety of things, depending on what time of day it is, it could be breakfast items, it just depends on what's being offered. So then I spoke to Kathleen and it morphed into having a book club once a month as well. And I'll let her speak on that on our next slide. So I've been um, co-teaching in Wendy's classes for a number of years and, and I can emphasize the students almost don't um, have the luxury to read because they're very busy. They're working, they have families and reading has never been something that they love. Um, I, a lot of times I'll tell the people I work with, just remember many of our students have not had a positive library experience. You know, they've had fines, they've been yelled at, they had a goofy middle school librarian and so forth. So we wanted to find books that would be interesting, accessible, and that we also had movies to choose from. We subscribe to uh, Swank, which is a movie database. So we wanted to kind of pair up books to movies that we had in Swank so we could show them after we would read or discuss the book. So the first one we have, and I don't have a copy of it because we, we, we give our copies away because uh, Wendy's grant covers the purchase of the books. So we're able just to give them to the students. So we that's want the helpful. students to build their own personal library and to share it with their friends and their family to help that population. So that has worked out well. Um, the first one we read was also a Sherman Alexi, but we did the short stories, Lone Ranger and Tonto Fist Fight in Heaven. And then we um, were able to, we planned to show smoke signals afterward. Um, then we did uh, George Orwell, 1984, Basketball Diaries, and The Girl on the Train, I think, for the first full year. We had access to all of those movies, but what we found was very interesting is the students would stay for the book discussion, but they never had time to stay for the movie. So um, we were able to email them the link to the movie, and I need to follow up to see how our statistics for those movies ended up being. Um, I think what else? Um, we, we've had about five to 10 at each one. We did include faculty, but and staff, but they only came to, I think, really the first one. After that, it was really just students. Um, we're really lucky. Our students are a variety of ages, so we would have 16-year-olds and then, you know, 65-year-olds discussing these different books. So my role was really just to kind of come up with some very generic questions, but I felt really strongly this was not, you know, to be you know, make sure everybody's getting the same theme or idea, kind of undo whatever they had thought before about assigned reading. So it was pretty, I think, some of them were very freewheeling. Um, I always, uh, one, like the Basketball Diaries, uh, it's kind of interesting. There was not a iota of sympathy for the narrator. <laughs> they were kind of like, he made his own mistakes. He screwed up. He's an addict. And, and it was kind of interesting to me because I had not seen it that 
I was not that uh, critical, I guess, of the narrator. And we tied that in also to a heroine um, documentary. Yes. And um, there, unfortunately, in our region, we do have opioid and heroin addiction. And that is something that we always try to select the books that will relate in some way to our students. Um, it, it, it could be a popular movie like The Girl on the Train, which we picked, or The Basketball Diaries, because we have students talking about they're raising their, you know, niece or nephew because their sister or brother are incarcerated because of that addiction. So we try to pick books that relate to them so they have that schema, they have that background knowledge to assist them with understanding the novel and then being able to have a fruitful discussion on it. Um, for the most recent semester, we kind of moved away from the movies and we picked a uh, hole in my life by Jack Gantos and if you've ever been a children's librarian he is the author of Rotten Ralph which I love those stories for my kids but um, his autobiography was very interesting and then we were really fortunate enough to have a connection to um, the author of none of the above her mother-in-law is a teacher at our local high school so we did um, none of the above which is about an intersex adolescent uh, by iw gregorio so that was um, really popular unfortunately because of when we did the book club piece we didn't have a great student turnout but we did have a good faculty turnout um, and she is willing to return to talk to our nursing students about uh, her area of expertise we did find that the numbers kind of dropped and we didn't connect to a movie, which was interesting because they weren't really staying for the movies anyway. So for next semester, we're going to go back to looking at more movie tie-ins. Um, I think we're going to actually do Stephen King, Carrie for Halloween. Halloween is a big deal on our campus. And um, we're kind of interested to see what the students uh, take out of it. A lot of them enjoy it. They get to know other people at the book club. They do come for the food. Uh, most most certainly. Um, Some professors also, depending on what the book is, if it ties into their curriculum, they will offer extra credit or some other incentive through their class in order to go. Because it is, like it was mentioned in the previous book club, it mm -hmm. is a bit time consuming. You know, on top of all of your other classes and work for them, you're reading a novel and you're going to a book club. So while the book is free, the lunch is free, um, the movie access is free, but the time sometimes <laughs> is invaluable. So we understand that and that becomes an issue. And we are a smaller a campus that has under 2000 students. So that, and they're all obviously commuter. They, do, they are not residential. So that becomes an issue for us because of the time constraints on these students already. And already Kathleen has talked a little bit about our results and how many have RSVP'd. We always plan for approximately 12 students to make it kind of um, personal and we make sure that they do RSVP because they are receiving the book to keep it. And it's also tied into my strategic grant. Um, we talk also about the student survey information that you'll see there as well and how that relates to, um, we had a survey done at the end to help us with our statistics for this as well. The takeaways, we've, we've kind of been talking about our lessons learned along the way, but we personally really needed to know our students. We needed to know our faculty and our curriculum in order to pick the correct books that aligned. Um, we also needed to make sure that we looked at the movie and how appropriate it would be. Was it available in Swank because of the financial um, responsibilities of our students? We wanted to make sure that it was not a financial burden in order to watch the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, we also already talked about that reading there as well, but, but encouraging them to try different books. We've had fiction and nonfiction books. Um, we've had realistic fiction that none of the above and, and lots of things that the students really can connect to on a different level. Um, but we've also learned a lot. I mean, I, I think Kathleen can talk about the discussions as a whole, what mm -hmm. she's learned from that. Yeah, a lot of the students, um, they really, uh, they're very excited to share their thoughts on the book. Um, they bring in a lot of different ideas because many of them are almost non-readers or not really used to being in that kind of discussion about a book. And initially, mm -hmm. the first couple was sort of like really had to encourage them. This isn't graded. There's no right or wrong. And I think, um, you know, being in the classroom a lot and being able to draw out from them, you know, what they think, what they're trying to, what they're trying to express and share is important because they're, they, um, some are intimidated, but most once they've been coming, they are very, you know, confident in their opinion. They grow more confident. They love taking the book back, sharing it, recommending it to people. 
Um, we also emphasize you do not have to finish the book. You know, the please come to book club even if you haven't finished it, even if you hated the book, you know, come and talk about it. So that part was fun, just trying to get them to enjoy reading. And then Wendy took um, this one step further at the end of the semester and we combined a book collection, uh, some of our weeding and some other things and had sort of a grab some books before the end of the semester giveaway. So we would display, um, faculty brought in a lot of paperbacks and people really look forward to that. I think we've done it two semesters now where students right. can come in and just sort of pick up books for fun. We and have a student success committee on campus and this idea of food for thought and our book club tied into the need that these students don't have a library at home. While they have the public library, mm -hmm. you know, transportation sometimes becomes an issue for them as well. So in order to encourage them to read over that winter break or the summer break, we had the students, uh, we had a donation station that we had where faculty, staff, students donated books. And we had that station up for about three weeks. We collected for the fall semester slightly over 100 bucks. We had a display for that week prior to finals. And it was basically encouraging them, you know, wonderful job this semester. Why don't you take a book to enjoy over the holiday mm -hmm. um, to encourage and continue your skills that you've learned this semester. Every single book was taken. And then this semester for the spring, we had well over 200 books. And I still have a handful of them that we are storing for our next semester, but it has become very successful and students have grown to know that that's gonna come at the end of our semester. And they have come and sometimes they'll take one and then I keep putting more books out as we get them and they'll swap out books. And they're very, you know, they could be Stephen King, Dean Koontz, they could be James Patterson, any popular variety, but there's some things that they weren't familiar with, but you'll see a group of students sitting there and talking, oh, I read that in my class, give that a try. And nice conversation, we always talk about how in, in my class, we talk about how reading, writing, and discussion all work hand in hand. If you're suffering in one area, mm -hmm. is you're probably having issues in, in the others. So lots of times in my developmental reading, they're also taking developmental writing course as well. So this has kind of snowballed and, and grown a lot larger than we expected. But you'll see on this last slide, this is an image of what the poster was looking like for the Food for Thought. So this is April, and this is some of the events that we had on campus. That first one there from Wilson College, our Keys program, that is the coordinator that works with students who are on for, uh, TANF for welfare benefits. And it was a single parent program they came in and spoke about. We had the resiliency documentary brought to us by our counseling department. Uh, the criminal justice day was by our admissions. TEAS was our nursing and academic specialists. We had an autism march at rain that day. So it was more inside, but we had an interactive station. Um, and then you can see we have a variety of other things. We include our veterans in this, but these, all of these events are brought to us by faculty and staff on our campus that are aware of what we do and how we make it work. And you'll see in that last column, that's the text now app number. And then they text that word to that app. And that's how I can correspond with them. And it comes to an iPad we have on campus that our students run, but I also have it on my phone as well. So I can man it over the weekend if necessary. And it doesn't, it's not time consuming. Uh, this is an example of a book club poster. This one is a bit longer than our normal ones, but we wanted to give students a little bit of a synopsis of the novel just because of the front cover doesn't really give it away. Mm -hmm. So we want to give them a little bit more and also to explain to them that this would be more than just a book discussion, that there would be an online chat with the author as well. So these are just some of the models and some of the examples that we have of what we do. Um, this will be changing a little bit as we move forward into the fall semester, just because my role has now changed. Um, I still have that strategic grant to use, but I'm also in charge of SGA and our planning board and all the clubs as well. So there will be a little bit more of an integration going on than was before. But currently this is, this is how we have marketed and managed for our community college students. Are there any questions? That sounds wonderful. I like how you brought the whole programs together because they sound sort of disparate, but you know, it makes sense to put them all together as under the food for thought umbrella. Um, so I, and I also thought it was really interesting that the students weren't staying for the movies because you try so hard to get you to do things that you, that sounds so obvious. Like, though, of course, I would think the opposite, that they'd stay for the movie and wouldn't stay for the discussion or they'd show up late. Um, so when you bring back the movies, are you still going to look for ones that are already available in Swank or? 
Yeah, and we're going to we're going to add canopy. So um, it seemed like that brought students in, and they did look forward to the link to the movie, and it was also a good way to promote Swank and um, so forth. But it they just didn't have time to stay for the the movie. It was kind of interesting. Well, and students were not aware that Swank was um, available to them free of charge. Oh, okay. And this was a way of promoting some of the um, available resources on the library's um, website as well. So what is the time commitment for each of the book clubs? How much library staff time is being used to promote or to put on these events? Um, honestly, it doesn't, uh, you know, doing reader's advisory is something that I, I can't speak for any of the other librarians, but sometimes you, you know, that's kind of the highlight that you don't get to do enough of. And so this is sort of taking books I think are interesting um, looking at our students and trying to think, well, okay, what would they like? So it's it's time consuming in the, you know, making sure the room's available, um, making sure the movie, the book, it's, you know, we can get all of it. Um, but it's not, I didn't find it, it's certainly not overwhelming. And because you're working on campus with faculty, it's really part of, you know, part of my job. So I don't, I don't feel like it was overwhelming. Here at Susquehanna, well, I can tell you there are some Wednesday nights at nine, nine o'clock when the camp rolls around and I really don't want to go to the pub and sit with students. Um, but once I get there, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and um, from the promotion point of view, how much of Gatlin's time was spent doing this? Ryan supervised your student intern. Um, he would probably spend um, probably an hour a week or so, two hours. It depended. It depends on how close we were getting to the event. Um, a lot of the the um, time was spent on prepping our emails <clears throat> and um, making sure our signage was in order. Immediately after each of our events, we sort of had a rush to. We we didn't plan ahead enough to know exactly what we were going to read each month. <laughs> um, so immediately after an event, we would scramble a little bit to figure out what we were going to do next and get the email set up and get the signage created and get it out and let everybody know. Um, but he did a lot of that work and the student library committee was responsible for coming up with the discussion questions. So um, we sort of skated through pretty easily. <laughs> we had to do the reading. Yeah. The podcast. I did not listen to the podcast. I was one of those people that was just like, I didn't have time for that. <laughs> um, I don't have a mute, so I can't sit in the car and listen to a podcast on my way to work. work. But lucky me. Um, the other thing that did take a little bit of time was as Ryan having the students selecting the readings and actually voting at the end of the book club. Okay, what are we going to read next? That really actually made it more intense than it necessarily needed to be. We were thinking about maybe we could plan maybe two months out. That would be right. for the 18 year olds in the room, but it can be done. Well, and for our campus, we really purchased the books ahead of time. I saw. So yeah. I've already asked Kathleen to give us our books that we're gonna be having for the fall semester so that I need to order them and have them all here for the students. So we always prep ahead of time and we have that all done. So yes, that's time consuming up front, but then once that you know, month comes along, I just pull out what I would need and we go from there. Um, but as far as you know, posters and things like that, yes, you know, we have to watch budget with how we're printing things and doing things, but we are a small campus. So we've been able to manage that with my strategic funds and um, just the resourcefulness of the students on campus. We had a, um, I have a student worker that assists some of our text now apps as they come in all the responses and keeping our RSVP less. And then I think you muted yourself. Oh. No, Diane muted us. Sorry. <laughs> that was me. I apologize. That's okay. Um, but we keep track also of the students that attend. We have a tutor track program through our tutoring center and we've been using um, their website as well to track our students that attend our Food for Thought websites. So we also have them. So if I know the book coming up, I will also mark it to those students specifically who've attended the book clubs in the past um, in order to let them know what's coming up, if they're interested, that sort of thing. 
That's great. Um, you probably already said this, but where you have a grant, right? And where did you, is that an internal grant or? Yes. Okay. Yes. It, um, our hack foundation, um, you can apply usually twice a year for them. And I had to go through the committee and through the board and things like that in order to present and receive that. My grant compared to some of the other ones is, is um, fairly small, um, but we've been, I've been very frugal with the money and uh, we've been able to manage things for a longer period of time than we expected. However, the, um, our Dean of Student Affairs has seen the, the need for these activities and seen um, also the, the results of the students attending them and had agreed to give us additional money to fund the next year. However, now with me in my new role, we've been able to roll <laughs> some of that into that, which is really nice because yeah. I really was already doing it's student development and multicultural programming with the Food for Thought grant, but now I'm able to go a step further and I'm able to incorporate it in. Our SGA handles all leadership and academic based activities and then our student planning board handles all the kind of fun and social activities so they can handle kind of a combination of the two together. She's, she's graduated and currently unemployed, so she's actively working, but... Um... Somebody's not muted who's yeah. talking. I have no idea who that is, but... I don't either. <laughs> I, I just muted them, so okay. it's okay Thank now. you. <laughs> um, are there any other questions or comments that anybody would like to ask, put forth? It is okay to unmute yourself if you have a question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you feel free to use the chat. Um, in the meantime, if we're all still kind of thinking about it, I do have an evaluation and I'm going to throw that into the chat right now. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions or comments, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And thank you, Catherine, Ryan, Kathleen, and Wendy for putting, for presenting for us. That was, this was very informative and I think really interesting the way two different um, institutions have kind of approached what you think is a standard book club. Book clubs are book clubs, but you can really do a lot of different things with them. Uh, I hope everybody takes a few moments to complete the survey and let us know your thoughts about the presentation today and about our programming in general. The link for the survey is in the, is in the chat box. And as a reminder, this presentation will be available to Pennsylvania Library Association members early next week through the website. If you're not a Pennsylvania Library Association member and you are interested in becoming a member, please feel free to email me and we can, I can put my email address in the chat box and I will let the appropriate person know. Um, I also invite you to contact us with suggestions for future discussions and presentations. We would most let, um, yes, yeah, so contact us if you would like to present. Uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Weekend already? <laughs> <laughs>